realize all you see is for you and I in your dreams through the nights every moment that passes by look to the heavens hands spread wide thanking Allah the most high there is no God but Allah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I welcome you viewers once again to our program iTeens World where we'll be discussing another topic that I'm sure will interest you. We'll just start with uh, introduction to the guest today where we also have a surprise guest that is a, a young entrepreneur. So we'll start with the intro, please. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Farhan Arif. Uh, I'm from Pakistan. I recently started a car business and uh, as a new entrepreneur, I feel that leadership plays a very important role uh, in my work. Welcome, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Atiq al-Rahman. I'm from India and I'm 18 years of age and I'm in grade 13. Mashallah, welcome to the show. Assalamu yeah. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Abdul Mateen Yusuf. I'm 17 years old and I'm in year 12. I'm from India. Mashallah, welcome to the show. Um, Quickly starting, I think we uh, have a very interesting topic today uh, and in continuation with the different topics that we have been discussing for the last few episodes, uh, this is one of the most important and perhaps the one that is the, uh, you know, the, the whole thing that revolves around leadership and it is building influence. And you know, nowadays they say that uh, in today's business, the most important thing for any business leader or even leaders of organizations or countries, it's building influence. So this skill is very much needed. And, and I think today what we will try to do is to see ways where we can facilitate the learning of these skills. How can we acquire it? How can we apply it? And because, you know, in the previous episode we did discuss that there are some skills and, you know, it's not just about acquiring the knowledge, but actually also applying it and then uh, not just applying, but applying in a way where it is effective. So I will just get back to the guest, and I think, Abdul Mateen, maybe you can relate to something that you feel. Why is today's youth more influenced by the outside world rather than being the one who is influencing? Because remember, we are Muslims, and we have the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we have the proper guidance, and we know that, and yet we are influenced by the outside. Um, yes, Brother Wasim, I think some of the things that you mentioned is true that teenagers, especially as I see in my school and some of my friends that they have, they're very much influenced by the media and media personalities, whether it be singers, footballers. Uh, I think some of the problems that pe people, people face is that they don't have Islamic personalities that they can look up to. Mm -hmm. And always I think it's a, it's, a persona it's a trait of human beings that they need somebody to look up to as a role model. Okay, and yes, there are Islamic personalities out there, but they are not there in that much numbers and they're not easily viewable. As you see on the billboards when you go outside, you see on the billboards on any radio station, on any news TV station, or any just um, media publishing uh, facility, you see all these random celebrities come up and all of them. But, but how do you then manage this? How do you, uh, you know, make sure that you are less influenced and then being more influenced to others? Because I see that in teens nowadays, you know, they're very much um, influenced not just by the media, but the peers, by the, uh, by the other things as well. But, but Wasim, who influences the peers? Again, it goes back to the media. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the media is the main source. It comes back to the peers, it comes back in the family. So once everybody has, for example, a footballer's hairstyle, you would like to go and get the footballer's hairstyle as well because, again, as we've discussed before, a person needs and wants to be part of the crowd. So I think that is an important factor that plays in a person's uh, development. Yeah. What do you think? I think uh, if you're getting back on the foundations of Islam, I think uh, the stronger the Iman, the less influenced you get by the outer world. Mm -hmm. So the first step of us individuals as individuals being a Muslim would be to strengthen our Iman and that can be by many ways have, as we have 
discussed in our previous episodes. And maybe you can reiterate, what do you think are the ways that we can build on the, the first moral and foundations? First and foremost, of course, is salah. Yeah. The and best being way to strengthen our iman. Yeah. Yeah. The best way. And also uh, uh, continuous learning, because you know Islam is all about continuous improvement. You can't just say, "Yeah, you know what? I I pray five times a day, and and that's it. I'm 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 a good Muslim. I'm okay. I, I'm doing enough to make sure that you know it's uh, it's I'm I'm being the Muslim. Um, the minimum things I need to do, I'm doing it. So mm-hmm. why do you want me to go and uh, influence others? Why I am focusing more on uh, you know, uh, just not, um, uh, you know, building that influence further down. What do you guys think? What uh, I was thinking, that it's very important to keep good company. Uh, we are being influenced. Uh, of course, the majority, the barrage of media that's coming in, um, that that is weakening the personality and the self-confidence of Muslims. And then they don't feel very comfortable expressing their ideologies. So, um, of course, strengthening our iman and staying within good company. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that uh, a man follows the religion of his friend. So once we keep good company, uh, it will slowly develop. Our iman will strengthen, and eventually we'll be able to influence. Yeah, Marshall. but I think, Brother Wasim, as a teenager, I faced it's very, very difficult to find people who are really like-minded completely and yeah uh, so like we can mind. of course start with the family first mm-hmm. as we yeah say. Uh, this is the job of the we parents start you know with, the family with our in cousins in and relatives yeah, yeah I, I think you know what um, perhaps you're right i think the parents need to provide that environment where we can nurture and um, you know, where we can uh, build that foundations on a base where uh, you know you you understand that actually you are the one who is on the right path you are the one who has the guidance subhanallah allah is the one of course who guides others and he is the one who gives the opportunity for us to practice our religion so it's re- really important that the parents and the teachers realize that they they are the ones who are going to build that confidence in the uh, uh, youth that will lead to uh, that understanding that okay you know we, why are we being influenced why are we are not influencing others and this is the I think cornerstone of dawah mm-hmm. and in an dawah in a- any place it's just not that we, we leave our jobs we leave our education and exactly. we do dawah we do dawah where in all the institutions I think you know like we should uh, ponder on this point like if we are not being influenced like we are being influenced by the other people so what is that point which is in them that is making them True, influence yeah. us? Yeah, I, I so think we should it, ponder on that point. Yeah, I think it's the weakness, weakness of Iman. Not and necessarily, but Wasim, for example, that's why, as he said, true, there are some people that we see in our school, in our surroundings, in our friends, that really influence other people. Like everybody wants to emulate him and be like him. Because and the majority I, is uh, going... In the opposite direction. direction. Yeah. Uh, but if we think, uh, if we be optimistic, of course we cannot reach the level of the Sahaba and of these course. people. But if you see uh, the initial da'wah of Islam, there are very few people. But within 20 years, it changed the whole landscape of Arabia. So things can change. We have to start small, of course, because we are in the minority. But if we start small and we are a small, strong group, if you can make a difference. But it was same, you yourself were a leader in your place of work. How did you manage to give influence? I heard many stories that where other people turned to do more good because of your initiative. It's not me. I, I will again say it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives you the opportunity. What you have to do is uh, build your knowledge. And by building your knowledge, not only of your deen, but the things around you. So you have a better understanding of the environment. People come to you, like in Islam, you know, the true leader is the one that the leadership is given to, you know, in an in organizational capacity. So well, basically so, what you're trying to say is like, uh, you should not just stay like thinking that, oh, I have uh, learned the Quran or I have uh, studied the hadith and that's my job and I'm done. So like, we, I think we should like have the knowledge of uh, the, both the parts, like the haqq and the batil. So the better we understand the boat, so we, we can find the difference, like the place. And then, you know, it even builds your iman more. Because yeah, then you exactly. really understand it and you, exactly. you feel like, uh, 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 Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us this gift. 
uh, of Iman and you know the, the, it really builds on it and you know you feel more motivated towards doing more work exactly. in, in the spreading the deen through the influence because it's all about influence at the end you know when you look at businesses it's it's all about influence the more influence you have you're on the top and yeah. that's why people respect you because where you are but you know I, I tell every peop everybody it's not just about getting that leadership post but because you have those leadership skills, mm -hmm. you will automatically have influence even if you don't have that title. Even if you don't have title, but because people will respect you and people will come to you to get that advice, to get that support. And this is how you do it. And people look at you and say, oh, you know, you know you're really following the moral rock, like I, I can say. You know, the build on the foundations of Islamic ethos, yeah. which is truth-telling, which is being you know um, uh, not only truthful but also fo following the guidelines of the Islamic ethos and you can have more examples of what Islamic ethos is um, uh, Abdul Mateen do you have any like what are the foundations other than truth telling uh, I think w what we discussed some in some of the previous we discussed episodes. Amana yes as well but uh, I think uh, especially when you're talking about building influence I think the points that we made in the episode that talked about humility and respect where the chief, you give an example of your uh, chief executive of your company coming and joining in with your employees and with the other uh, colleagues in your company, and, and that obviously has a more um, has a more impact on yeah, the. So you can they can influence like yeah. they might be thinking like this guy is such a uh, such a high post, and what has got into him that he he comes to has the level. will to yeah. come and sit with these people. Like what has got into him? Yeah. So people will, of course, ponder. Like on I said, you know, like some uh, uh, Muslim CEOs uh, working in different parts of the world, when they work on the front line with the laborers or with the people that are working in the front line customer service, it makes a big difference. It exactly. makes a big difference, huge difference, how much respect they have. And this is what one of the examples, organizational level, but in schools, the guy that everybody comes to and says, yeah, can you help me with the homework? Can you help me with uh, some, uh, some, uh, some things? This is influence because this person has influence over the others. You know, there, is, uh, there was a doctor in U.S. And uh, mashallah, this brother uh, used to help anyone that comes to him. And you know, he, he had so much influence at the end that the whole county was asking him to become the leader of uh, in the United States. There was one county where he was. So it was why? Because of influence. And exactly. how did he do it? He was just following the foundation. He wasn't doing it for he, getting a leadership role, yeah, exactly. but people were offering him that role to come and you know serve our community because we see you, you help everybody. You are taking care of everyone. It's another example is in Africa where uh, one of the brothers I met and uh, basically he was saying that you know, they, they come to the guidance, uh, like uh, they come for guidance to Muslims, where yeah. Muslims are in a minority because they see some Muslims that they are very honest, they follow the guidelines, of course they're on the deen, Quran and Sunnah, exactly. they are really practicing it, not just uh, acquiring the knowledge and sitting on it. So people want them to take the lead, even they are in minority. It's like the example that uh, one of the sheikhs gave of uh, a mother wanting her children to become Muslims and when she was asked like why you want your children to become Muslims and then the answer she replied was like really amazing and beautiful like because she said like I want my children to grow up and treat me better like the Muslim children treat their mothers Mashallah. so yeah. right now I want them to become Muslims so that when I grow old and when I need their support they support me not just throw them at the old age institutions like many exactly people do today. Exactly, like what's happening right now. It's a very nice discussion. Inshallah, we'll be taking a short break and we'll be back soon and we'll continue from where we are leaving. And inshallah, see you back in a short while. Look to the heavens, hands spread wide, thanking Allah the Most High. There is no God but Allah. Reading the Qur'an is a blessing. Understanding its translation is beautiful. But diving in depth and extracting pearls from it is simply amazing. Do they not ponder upon the Qur'an? 
Every week, inshallah, we will dig deep and reflect on the verses of the Quran one by one. Quran in depth with Sheikh Ibrahim Zaydan only on Huda TV. Look to the heavens, hands spread wide, thanking Allah the Most High. There is no God but Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, we were just talking about uh, the most important topic in iTeens world, and we were just discussing and how to build influence. And we are just going to now refer back to the most influential person ever in history. And I think Abdul Mateen will relate to what we were just discussing and continue. Yes, but Wasim, as uh, we were just uh, discussing in the break, that. Uh, you know, we have as Muslims, we are blessed that we are born as Muslims. Why? Because we have the most influential man who ever lived as our prophet, as our role model, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's not, just a, that's not just a phrase that is mentioned by us Muslims. You remember the book, uh, 100 Most Influential People in the World? Yeah, Michael Hart. By, yeah, Michael H. Hart. He was a non-Muslim. But he still put Muhammad وسلم, as the first foremost person who had the most influence on all of mankind. And this is why we have, when our leader is the most influential leader in the whole world, we should actually thrive on it. And so we should yeah, be proud of like us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To, like, uh, you to know, continue. have that influence, build that influence. And when we go in schools, not have that low confidence that we see sometimes youth have. And, you know, when, uh, when they just try to hide their, uh, you know, I, 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 oh, I don't want to show that. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Muhammad, but I call, want to call myself Mo. Mo. Because, yeah, because I don't want to portray that I'm a Muslim. But in fact, we should be really proud. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Muhammad is the name of a person who was the most influential person in all of humanity. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, you sometimes feel like uh, uh, Muslims when they are in schools, um, you know, youth like yourself, and you might relate to it better than me, but because I work with youth, so I have this opportunity, that they try to not only hide sometimes, but also sometimes, you know, going, just getting up for salah, be but because you're with a group of people, and you don't want to be the odd one out exactly. to just come and mm -hmm. stand up. So you just, you know, become lazy, and you, you procrastinate, and you think, oh, uh, should I go? It will look uh, different if I just move yeah, up. So even these points relate back to, like, what we discussed, like, earlier in the break, mm -hmm. like, the stronger the iman you have, so if we like uh, ponder in, on the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and every single act which he did, if you think about it, and if not, of course we can't reach that level, not even the level of the Sahabas, but even if we give our try, we can really, really make a big influence. Keep good company that will increase our confidence, because if you are alone, the peer pressure will get into. Even though we have knowledge, we won't be able to implement it. Yes. But, but you know, the, uh, again, uh, like Abdul Mateen was also saying, it's difficult to find good the, companionship. The yes. good companionship. So, how do we think that you know uh, youth can handle this? What other means we can suggest? What do you guys think? Um, I think maybe uh, as right now we're in a position where we can uh, uh, have, especially now. I think it's the job of the parents, because as youth, I don't have any answers for that. Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm now let's look at it from a parent's perspective, as a person who has authority, as a person who has the ability to I do something. I think the parents need to provide that environment, so other than school, the out, um, I think the activity. And instead of waiting for something to happen, they themselves should start something. But as and a teenager, this part of the teenager, when a, a, a child reaches the age of a teen age, that's the time when he can really try to differentiate, he can sort of at least differentiate between the good and the bad. But because since many people are still going into the bad, you, you have the, you are pushed into it. You just, like, pro, like, there is a, like there is a saying that uh, the time will come where even though you're not, you're not involved in the matter, you'll still get affected. And the similarity to, to, to that is that a person who are playing in, who are, people are playing in dirt, and you're just standing on the side of the road, all right? They're getting all muddy. But because you're, you're already there, 
you get some of the dirt on you as well. Do you think that extracurricular activities, outdoor activities exactly, will help? Exactly, exactly will help because uh, at this age, like the more you're exposed to the outer world, because I the think better this is a, yeah, get, this is a, uh, you know, you get polished. age that can be very productive. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of things because you have a, a lot more time uh, 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 with you to do those activities. And I feel like sometimes, uh, again, it comes to time management as well exactly. because it will help you. If you're organized, you will know that what, where you need to spend uh, time to make sure that you're away from that yeah, like uh, the people uh, will look at you, like look back at you. Keep yourself busy in positive activities. Yeah, I, I yeah. think yeah. that's the other thing. So, you know, you get involved in the community, you get to do some volunteer work, you, you pay attention to the friends you have, of course, but if you can't find more, you try to build relationship with the right people. Mm -hmm. And Bring I think the, to, uh, the best is the connection with the masjid, yeah, you know, the from where you yeah. can also have some friends where you can relate to, you can... Yeah. Uh, uh, Bring back to the topic of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi being the most influential people. I was just remembering that, um, why, why, why is that? Okay, then you, when you read the seerah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, his uh, biography, you do realize that he himself put himself in the self line. For example, as we were discussing, uh, discussing a little bit uh, before, during the Battle of the Trench, he himself went and dug the trench. Yeah. When they built the mosque, the first mosque in Medina, he himself went and, uh, and, and did the building. He didn't just stand there and say, hey, you do that, I do this. Just right? because he's a leader. Yeah, I, because he's a leader. And even though he had every right to do that, he was a prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa So I think the, the aspect of a leader putting himself in, with, in the midst of, the, of his people that he's responsible for, mm -hmm. actually, it, it, can, it, can create a big influence. Yeah, can yeah. create a big influence. They're not subjects. He's not a king. He's a leader. Yeah. He's and responsible for that. And you can take a lot more examples from the Prophet Sallallahu life, uh, you know, in terms of how he was between and how much influence he had, everything. But, but of course, he, he was the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He had the best message for the humanity, for all mankind. So, of course, you know, what he brought was the best of the best. And we have it. We and have yet, it. It's, uh, yet it's like we are influenced rather than being, uh, you know, g getting other people to be influenced by Islam. And it's the weak faith, like we said. Uh, Brother Rasim, I was just thinking about something. Another point or another way he was able to influence a lot of people, his subordinates, his subjects, was that he put into practice what he preached. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. That makes a big, big difference. Uh, he was practicing the revelation the Quran, it was his practice. So the Sahaba, it was more easy for them to see a model, a practicing model. Like so they that's could a see tremendous like way. The Quran is his life. Yeah. Like everything which is yeah, written. As Aisha radiallahu anha said, that uh, uh, Quran, that his character was the Quran. So he, that's a tremendous way to command respect and build influence because your leader is practicing what he's preaching. Yes, exactly. And the other thing is, I think, you know, sometimes we, uh, we feel that if you are, uh, you know, with the people and you, you know, the community development, for example, you know, if you're involved with the community, you build influence. Yeah. You're doing things for them, right? You're helping them out. It, it creates that... Even if you don't do things for them, I think. Yeah. But if you be with them yeah. and, like, and you think about it, like, what things can influence them? Like yes. what things? But of course, you know, at the end, we we want to um, uh, you know keep that intention that it is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are not helping them to build influence. Of course, yeah, we, we need that humility all the time. Uh, the influence is to be built so that uh, uh, the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is preached in the way it should be. And I feel like uh, Brother Farhan is absolutely right when it comes to people not. Uh, you know, they're preaching, but they're not really practicing it in but their But Brother Wasim, coming back to the topic where um, I may not be a leader, but I still am somebody and I, and I have friends and they might not be doing things that are probably right. Why, what do people do in these situations when I'm not a leader, I can't exactly have an influence on that person through means of coming and joining them? For example, how do, you, how do we react in that situation? I think it's, you know, carrying yourself with confidence. I believe that if you I think bad, uh, bad, bad things get, inf get, gets you attracted more faster. You know? Yeah. So yeah, you were yeah, saying about confidence. Yeah. yeah, I think if you have the confidence on your deen, you uh, you have your foundations of the deen very clear, and you you have acquired those skills, you are putting it into practice. I think it makes it easier to carry it on. Exactly. You know, if you if you are uh, one person who avoids certain things, 
and everybody knows that, they will not come to you and say, you know what, Abdul Mateen, let's go, uh, you know, perhaps go to some place where I it's not reasonable for a Muslim to go. True. And they will automatically start thinking, no, I don't think Abdul Mateen will go there, so they will not ask. Yeah, so for they a while they'll think perhaps a little scared go. from you. So even though you're not a leader, but because you practice what you preach, it becomes... And but even it, if but his, his, it's, uh, it's even important for him to show that quality in a positive way. Yeah. So if they think that, of course, Abdul Mateen will want, not want to go at that place, but that if he has that positive effect on them, they will think again that why does why he don't... Why are we not going? To, why are we going to the, that place in the first uh, instance? Exactly. Why yeah. does he doesn't? What's the thing which is stopping him? Yeah. Like, is it something like, we are doing it, we are having fun. Even he is a human. But then, Brother Wasim, at the end of the day, it comes back to that we don't have the as big as a social uh, social circle if we do if we involve in like trying to stay away from the crowd but i think that's a hit that we need to take in order in order for us to be closer to islam because at, at the end of the day we it is a test from allah this life is a test and i think you know social circle is one thing but uh, you know influence is the other yes you need to keep the social circle but not on the expense of our deen, exactly. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we we would try to come out of it, and we will say, no, uh, um, listen, it, it it doesn't work like this. I am following certain guidelines that are for me. Yeah, like exactly, like, like now how it happens, like you are called for some dinner, and then it's like say suppose dinner, which the friend of yours called, is coming in between some it's your salah time. So nowadays the weakness, look like, look at the weakness of our iman. Like, we shift the salah and attend the dinner. Like, we say, if it's, if, for example, if we say it's salat al isha, we say we attend the dinner, then we come back home and then we pray. Why? <laughs> yeah, true. That's, that's, the, that's the point we should be think of, thinking about, right? Mm. Well, I see, when it goes to meetings, so we'll pray later, no problem. When in fact, everybody's actually Muslim over there, but we still are scared to put, uh, put that thing forward. I don't know why. Priorities are out of place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's sum it up. Um, let's see what takeaways we can give to our viewers today uh, that, you know, perhaps will be first step towards understanding what is influence, how we can build it, and then reading about it and then acquiring that knowledge and putting it into practice. practice. Um, uh, Abdul Mateen, would you like to sum up? Um, yeah, I think um, some points I would, uh, I've learned over here is that uh, a leader should take, go forward and act with humility and respect towards his, the people that he's responsible for and go join their own, uh, on, and go and join the front lines in whatever aspect that they're working towards. And as well as a person who is not a leader, he should have confidence um, in, uh, in what he's doing and so that he, other pe the other people have, uh, the other people are, know that this guy is Muslim and he doesn't do such and such things. And at the end of the day, they themselves will think that yeah, he's not doing this. Why is he not doing this? Maybe we should not do it as well. Would you so like to add anything else? Yeah, I would just like to say like like strengthening our iman. Yeah. The salah, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, the most important part. Yeah, and building the iman and understanding of They'll the keep deen. us firm. Yeah. Firm on the, the firm right we path are and the keep good company. Uh, even though it's difficult, but uh, you have to take speaking. that step. Yes. If you take that step, then the help will come from Allah. And inshallah, things will become like easy. If we can't keep a good company, we can at least start a good company. Yeah. And uh, that's what we have to... Uh, at the end of the day, this life is a test from Allah. Okay, thank you so much. It was really nice discussing exactly. with you guys. It was a very interesting topic. And I'd like to thank viewers as well for watching the program today. And inshallah, we'll be back with another episode of iTeens World. Till then... It, uh, see you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To the window, realize all you see is for you and I. In your dreams, through the nights, every moment that passes by. Look to the heavens, hands spread wide, thanking Allah the Most High. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. Look to the heavens, hands spread wide, thanking Allah the Most High. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. There is no God but Allah.
Muhammad is his messenger.